Welcome back everyone to another episode of the Shots Fired Body Camp Breakdown. We wanna thank Police Activity for posting today's video because when we came across it, we were shocked at all the things that happened and you are about to see why. Before we start today's video, have you seen all the crazy things that have been happening to cops off duty? Yeah, I've looked at that and monitored that across the internet. Yeah, in one article, I saw a guy drive his car through an officer's personal home, garage, and open fire in his house. And then this past week, a Chicago PD officer was ambushed after he got off of work. If you haven't, Google your name. You'll be surprised at everything that you see. You'll find your name, your address, your phone number, and even your relative's information. I value my privacy, I also value yours. That's why we use Aura, the sponsor of today's video. If you want to completely wipe off your information online and be completely safe and secure, go to Aura.com forward slash shots fired and start your two week free trial today. I don't know if you saw this, but AT&T just revealed that over 73 million customers records, both existing and former customers were released on the dark web. They recommend those affected use stronger passwords, monitor account activity and consider credit freezes or fraud alert from credit bureaus. Well, Aura does all this for me, and best of all, I don't have to download several different apps just because a company couldn't keep my data secure. If my information was compromised by AT&T, I wouldn't even worry because I know that Aura is always on and it's always doing the hard work keeping me safe. We value our safety and we value yours. If you want to get signed up, go to Aura.com forward slash shots fired and get signed up for your free trial today. Click the link in the description below. This video comes out of Clark County, Washington. On April 13th, 2024, at about 10.38 a.m., Clark County Sheriff's Office deputies responded to a reported carjacking. The victim reported two suspects, a male and a female, had stolen his van. The witness also stated that the male suspect was armed with a handgun. The suspects reportedly left the scene in the stolen van. In about 10.54 a.m., the deputies were dispatched to a suspicious circumstance near the Goodwill in Salmon Creek. Let's watch the body camera. Hey, dude, your pockets. What's up? You're going to get bit by a dog. You're going to get bit by a dog, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're going to get bit by the dog, dude. You're going to get bit by the dog. That's a gun. Okay, in this first body cam clip, you can see that the canine handler clearly sees the suspect. He's trying to get his dog target locked on the suspect. He's giving commands. However, the suspect clearly doesn't want to obey those commands, turns around and begins to walk away. That's when you heard the deputy say, What's your gun? Hands up. What's going on? Hands up. Stop. 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 Hands in your pockets. We're going to get bit by a dog. Get your hands out of your butt! Get back! You guys get back! He's got something in his hand. Get in his hand! Are you ready to have a shot? No? Man, send the dog. There's people over there. Okay, we just watched the same sequence of events from another officer's body cam. Clearly the suspect does not want to cooperate. He's taunting the dog, he's backing up, and now all the officers have recognized that this suspect has a gun. He's turned around and he's taken off towards the building. Fast, fast, fast. Okay, you can see the canine handler enter that building and deploy his dog towards the suspect, giving him his bite command saying, Foss, Foss, Foss. That is the canine's command to bite the suspect. However, you can see that there were innocent people inside that building, and luckily none of them got bit to include the suspect. You can see by the dog's behavior, clearly he didn't want anything to do with anybody. Dude, you're gonna get After the canine runs back to the handler, the suspect enters the bathroom, immediately comes out brandishing handgun at the deputies, causing them to engage. Okay, so let's talk about some training points that we've noted in this video, because honestly, there's a lot of stuff that stood out that really put a lot of people in jeopardy. I was lucky enough to be on a full-time SWAT team in a busy city, and we did a lot of apprehensions similar to this. Yeah, and I was fortunate to be a dog handler for over eight years, and we also were involved in a lot of critical incidents where things did turn lethal. And when you have a dog and you're trying to deal with a situation where somebody's armed with a gun, 
it is very difficult and you have to make quick decisions on the fly. So let's talk about the initial contact from the one body cam perspective that we're gonna see here. From my perspective, we always married up with the canine handler. We always provide a lethal cover for that officer. We never left that officer's side. And in this case, it didn't happen. Yeah, if you're the dog handler, you're gonna want lethal cover with you because in this video, the handler actually had both hands on the leash and he didn't have a lethal option with him. So all the other cover officers branched off to the left-hand side and they actually got behind some parked cars, kind of leaving themselves with an obstructed view of the suspect. And in the video, the canine handler actually has the best view of the suspect. You have to take into account that you know you're responding to a call where these people carjacked two people at gunpoint, meaning you know that there's a gun involved. So bringing a dog to a gun call is already risky in and of itself. And in this case, he doesn't have a cover officer with him and he's leaving himself completely exposed by not even having his own gun out. Yeah. And what I did notice also is that one officer had his taser out, was pretty close to the suspect. So, I mean, you have less lethal. That's good. But as soon as that suspect pulled his handgun out, the officer didn't holster his taser, but he pulled his handgun out and po pointed both at the suspect. Like, this should never happen. It is not trained. You should only have one less lethal or lethal item pointed at a suspect. In this case, if he were to flinch or something, he could potentially have pulled the trigger on both of those or accidentally shoot when he wanted to use the taser. All right. Yep. So let's talk about now the perspective of the dog handler. So like I had mentioned, both hands are on the leash. He's actually trying to get his dog to get focused on that suspect to get target locked. You can actually see if you look at the dog's behavior and anybody that's a dog handler out there would recognize this. The dog was not interested in the suspect. He's kind of looking around. He looks back at the handler. He's a bit confused. Now, this wouldn't be common if it was a new dog, no street bites and not a whole lot of street experience. These are all things that dogs have to build on. However, if you're bringing a dog to a call involving a firearm, you should recognize that about your dog if it is brand new and understand its limitations. Now, if you do release a dog that is not target locked on the suspect, he doesn't have cover with him, he's actually making the situation worse because now you have an animal running around. You don't know if he's gonna bite the suspect. You don't know if he's gonna turn and bite a, uh, one of the officers. He might even turn around and bite you. You don't know. So it, it does pose a risk by deploying a dog who isn't target locked on the suspect, like in this case. And one of the officers, you could even hear him saying, hey, Van, deploy the dog, like send the dog. Like we would never tell the canine handler when to deploy a dog. And in this case, it almost looked like the suspect or the, the officer was a little frustrated because he knows that the suspect is going to a building that has people in it. Yeah, so the, you, do, you do hear the cover officer say deploy the dog. And you're right, as a dog handler, you're the only one that's gonna dictate when you're gonna deploy that dog. So I noticed that in this video though, that the handler actually had first glance of the suspect pulling the firearm out, which he calls out, he calls out gun. Two things that I noticed, one, he still didn't have his firearm out. And two, as the suspect retreats back to that business and that cover officer was telling the handler to deploy the dog, you're not gonna deploy a dog on a suspect who now has a firearm in his hand. That would be very detrimental to the dog who's not gonna win that fight. And it's now become not a less lethal call. This has now become a lethal call. And as a dog handler, you have to recognize that. Well, and when the suspect ends up running, he's going in a back door of what ends up being like a restaurant portion or a kitchen of a, of a, a building of some kind. But that is the hard call at this point of, do you use lethal force? Do you chase this suspect down? Like it's a very difficult situation. And honestly, it shouldn't have got to that point where the suspect was moving that close to this building. Something should have been done much sooner. We talk a lot in our class, our patrol survival tactics class, that decision-making and critical thinking are the top two things that we, we talk on the most. And that is exactly why. When you're put in a situation where you have to make a decision on the fly, which could be a lethal situation or a lethal decision, you have to be comfortable making that call and knowing when you can and can't do certain things like that. And so if you're gonna allow a suspect who's armed with a firearm, who's displayed the gun, he's already carjacked two different people, you know he's a danger to the public, and now he's entering a, a, a business occupied with more people, there's all sorts of things that could go wrong there. So the canine handler continues to follow the suspect into the building. What made me nervous was as the canine goes into the building, the handler, you can hear him actually give his bite command, which is FOSS, FOSS, FOSS. And as he does that, there's actually a citizen literally standing right there at the doorway. Now, had that dog 
wanted to bite somebody, he would have immediately bitten that guy. So that handler got incredibly lucky and that citizen got incredibly lucky. Uh, that made me a little bit nervous. You know what also made me nervous was the fact that that canine handler was so far ahead of the other, other deputies that those deputies had to sprint to catch up to him. And now they're entering a building not knowing where that canine handler is or what's going on at all. Yeah, those are conversations you have to have with your patrol uh, partners. You know, hey, briefing trainings. If you're the dog handler, you got to tell your per- partners, I need somebody with me at all times. But you also have to have the wherewithal as a canine handler not to just leave your cover officers behind. So if you are the cover officer and you see that happening and the canine handler is moving further ahead of you, you got you to catch up to that person and be right on their tail uh, to provide that cover for them. And I think that's why it's so important as a, ha- uh, a canine handler to have that conversation, but also as a cover officer, you immediately marry with that officer, the canine handler, and you do not leave their side because in this case, you'd have two officers make an entry. Yep. All right. So let's talk about the suspect makes it inside. There's people inside there and he decides to retreat into that bathroom. That was when the handler decides to deploy the dog off leash and hopes that he thought he was going to bite the suspect, which ultimately doesn't happen. Now I say why that is a huge problem is because now you've got this dog running around off leash. He's not biting the intended suspect. You've got this animal running around. The handler is trying to pay attention to the dog. He's was more concerned about giving his dog the bite command and trying to get his dog to apprehend the suspect than he actually was engaged, had that suspect come out of that bathroom, which ultimately he does. But that's a very risky move because you've got people in here and you're sending this dog kind of nonchalant, just telling him to bite. And that, that is very, that's a very risky move for the dog handler to do that. And when those officers or the deputies made entry into that, that kitchen area, there's two people standing in there. They made no announcement to say, the guy's got a gun, get out. They entered. There's a lot of people in that place. Look like they're sitting and eating. No one made announcements to them. And I really would have liked to have seen those deputies actually move further around to provide protection to basically be between those citizens and that suspect to protect them at some point and not stand off of this side. That's all quick thinking. You're right. We do talk about that in our field survival training class. Yeah. So it's just creating that wedge between the suspect and the victims. And you got to be quick about doing that. But that's what you have to be thinking about knowing this guy just went in that building. You can't try to think of that stuff on the fly. Those, those are all things that you should have trained before. And so that it's just secondhand nature to just know to do those things. So the, so the suspect goes into the bathroom and then he almost immediately emerges. And that's when he pulls the firearm and points it towards the deputy. I will say the deputy, the canine handler reacted pretty fast uh, to that gun being pointed at him and fired numerous rounds into the suspect, which is what you see in the video. Uh, but I think if that suspect really wanted to hurt or injure one of those officers, he would have fired that gun, which for whatever reason, we don't know. He doesn't fire the weapon, which ends up being a revolver. So once the suspect was down, we're not going to show the rest of this video, but it should be noted that it took those deputies more than three minutes to even create a plan to, to approach that suspect. That's where the critical thinking skills really come in, judging where the gun is at, how far it's from the suspect, what the suspect is actually doing, if they're alert or not alert. Do you have a shield? Other officers need to be communicating and creating a plan. Three minutes is a really long time in this situation. Okay, so my final thought on this whole scenario was just that I I feel like these deputies may have got thrusted in this situation and they weren't fully prepared or hadn't fully thought out a situation like this. And when you get caught off guard and you're trying to play catch up, that's when mistakes start to happen. And when you're trying to formulate plans as it's happening, it's extremely difficult to do, especially when you're in intense amount of stress. Luckily, none of the officers or deputies in this video got hurt and luckily no citizens got hurt. But it really does highlight the need to be able to critically think, make decisions, train and coming speaking on behalf of a dog handler know your dog know your dog's limitations and being able to read your dog's behavior and then what situation are you in where it would be appropriate to use a dog and then when it's not appropriate to use a dog i think my final thoughts on this video is that it really seemed like the situation may have evolved really fast but again that goes back to critical thinking skills and having a plan and communicating with your officers and that's immediately marrying up with with your canine handler and then also communicating as this happens. You can tell by the demeanor of the suspect, he wanted nothing to do with them and almost like continuously tested these deputies as this progressed, really trying to formulate a plan, not spread out too much. And then if you're gonna make entry into a building, you've gotta communicate those people in there, tell them to get out. And I really think your responsibility at that point is public safety and you've gotta position yourself between that suspect 
and those citizens because they knew he had a gun. They all saw that he had a gun and no one actually really addressed that. This video was really actually hard to watch. I'm happy that no other citizens were injured in this, but that's why training is so important. All right, so that concludes today's body cam breakdown. We want everyone to know that we do these videos so that people are safe and that officers that watch these and use them as training do things in a safe manner and we learn from these types of things. And if you're a citizen or an everyday person that watches these videos, number one, we appreciate your support. But number two, you can see the value and why training is so important and crucial for police officers. Thank you for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video. See ya.